This forward-looking indicator shows that the global economy could be heading into potentially a depression, and that is not good news that I wanted to deliver today. So let's get right into it and see what's going on. So the biggest collapse in M2 money supply since the Great Depression. Really crazy. The money supply is contracting in the United States. And as the saying goes, if the US sneezes, the whole world catches a cold. So that is not a good sign for the global economy. And basically, it's also happening in Canada. But I wanted to show you this because I found this really interesting. Basically, during 2007, 2008, the M2 money supply, it really, the growth of it started to slow massively before that recession happened. And now, fast forward to now, you can see what's happening with the M2 money supply contracting right here. And a lot of people were saying, you know, this was the US regional bank failures, which didn't really make any sense. Um, but now we know that's not the case because it's even happening in other countries like Canada. So this is really not a good sign at all. And now I want to show you this because this this basically really shows what I was trying to show you there in in a easier way to look an easier way to look at it anyways. And if you look, you can see the great recession here, the growth of M2. It did go down, but you know, it bounced back and it stayed well above the 0% line. And the great depression, it just went straight down from 1929 all the way to 1932 or the middle of 1931. So that is just kind of crazy that we are seeing similar signs right now to the Great Depression. And obviously, when you think about the yield curve and all the other red flags that we have, it's not good, is it? It really isn't good. That's just the only way of putting it. And uh, when you look at Canada's money supply, you can see the same thing happening. You can see the money supply is, in fact, contracting. And when you're talking about M2, M2 is essentially just measuring deposits. It's just measuring deposits, cash outstanding, all these different things. It's the money supply. So, you know... <laughs> It's not a good sign when you have a financialized economy and then you have the money supply contracting. That's the opposite of what you need. In a financialized economy, you need the money supply to always be increasing in size to pay for all these ever-increasing asset bubbles. So essentially, what does this mean for the asset bubbles like the stock market, the real estate market? It does not mean good news. And it might take a while for it to be realized in those markets. But sure enough, it will happen. It's almost a certainty with this and the yield curve. So kind of crazy. And then this came out as we talk about monetary deflation. Yesterday, they released the CPI or the CP lie, as I call it, Canada's inflation rate slows to 3.4%, lowest level in almost two years. Deceleration of headline rate, mostly due to gasoline, um, as most other aspects are still going up fast. So that is not good either. Consumer is being absolutely destroyed. And could the money supply actually be showing that, us that ahead of time? that they are being destroyed, that they are losing money, their standard of living is collapsing with that money supply as well. So it could be because it is crazy when you think about the money supply and what everyone was saying in 2021 and how they were wrong on that. And now we're talking about monetary deflation. Inflation rate dropped to 3.4% in May. What that means for the Bank of Canada, that's what Global is saying. So they're all talking about inflation in the context of are they going to raise rates another 25 basis points. I really think, you know, talking about that, spending time talking about that is just a complete waste of your time, my time, because quite frankly, having rates as high as they are right now is crushing everyone when you have the fourth most indebted households in the world, the eighth most indebted businesses in the world, and you hold rates this high, that is a hell of a lot of pain. It's like the equivalent of to over 20% in interest rates back in the 80s, for instance, which a lot of people refer to and say, well, back in my day, interest rates were 21%, you know. But the thing is, debt levels were a lot lower back then. And that's what a lot of people don't take into account. The debt is so, so high 
and all the prices that you see in the real estate market, they're really a reflection of the debt that's outstanding because we're not seeing any of that being paid back at all. It's a complete Ponzi scheme. So as you can see here, core inflation rate coming down. This is the Bank of Canada's favorite measure. You can see it is coming down, but still, like on a long-term basis, when you look down that chart, it is still extremely high. And the thing is, with the base effects now coming into play towards the fall, you could actually see this number start to rise, go to 4% to 5% because of those base effects. Because when you look at the month-over-month -month core inflation, it remains high. And a lot of this will be to do with the fact that people are demanding higher wages because inflation is so high. And obviously, another factor to that is because we have such indebted households and businesses and interest rates have been put up, obviously, whilst they can, they're going to try and pass on those increases in interest rates to the consumer. So they will try and do that. And that's exactly what I believe is happening. But they can only do that for so long because if the consumer's wages aren't going up and they're being crushed by all angles, eventually that is going to come to fruition in the form of recession slash depression. So kind of crazy. And then just to explain to you real quick what the base effect really is, I'll show you this. The consumer price index is a standard measure of the price of a representative basket of goods and services. The headline consumer inflation is measured as the percentage change between the CPI in the current month, May 2023, and the CPI in the base month or the same calendar month of the previous year, May 2022. Now, I just want to quickly explain this to you because I think it's important that people understand this. So I'll bring up this and I'll quickly show you this. So let's imagine the index is at 100 for the consumer price index because what you see down here is actually measuring the percentage change in this number and I'm just using 100 to keep the math easy. So right now it's gone up to 103.7. Okay, we understand that. So if you go back to 2022 in August, I'll use that as an example, the consumer price index would have been at this 100.8. Okay, so right now, as of May's report, we're at 103.7. So when we get to August, whatever this number 103.7 is, the percentage difference between that and it in August 2022, when we get the report that comes out in September, will be the, the inflation rate, the inflation year over year that we see, see, the change that's on all the headlines and everything like that. So why am I telling you this? Well, if you look, you can see here, that what happened was June was zero, then you had 0 0.4 and 0 0.8%. So you had 0.8% that was reported essentially in that three month period. And if you actually count even into four month period, it would be still 0.8%. But basically, what's interesting about this is because of the base effects, because the consumer price index was so high last year, what it means essentially is that when you do this calculation again, so let's say now that we have 0.4%. I'll do it here so you can see it better. So let's say 23, 23 in August, we've had 0.4% for the three months that have been reported. So that would be June, July, and August. And we're looking at this report in September, that will be 1.2%. So then we add the 1.2% to that number and we get 149, sorry, not percent. So the index would be 104.9. So then you would be measuring the percentage change between 100.8, sorry, and 104.9 which is 4%. So that would actually measure as an increase in the CPI. And that's just if the CPI goes up by 0.4%. And as you can see, all year, we've only had one report that has come under 0.4%, which is January. So <laughs> you can decide what looks more likely here. 
And I hope that kind of made sense to you. And then I want to show you this because we're talking about inflation as if it's something that is actually not a fictional number. But the reality is it is pure fiction, as you and I know. When you look at shadow stats, this is the real truth of inflation. And you can see that the 1980s base CPI is still over 10%. Yes, this is in the United States. That doesn't really matter too much because the CPIs are pretty much tied at the hip, as you've seen over the past years or just overlay them over each other. They just one slightly understates the other. And basically, you can see how the CPIU, which they use right now, completely understates what's going on. And basically, obviously, the Bank of Canada gets fed this information like the Federal Reserve from the BLS and the Statistics Canada. These government organizations essentially come up with the inflation data which is totally wrong. So, of course, we expect them to make terrible decisions because they're fed terrible data from the government. So the reality is inflation is a lot higher than 3.7% and people are being absolutely crushed. So if you've enjoyed this video, you might like that video there. You might also like that video there. I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves, guys.